Coming up on Mobile Learning in the Classroom, Pokemon Go! Hi, I'm Zoe Falls. And I'm Guy Trainin. And today we're going to talk about Pokemon Go. And Pokemon Go has kind of taken over the internet and it's taken over the smartphones of basically everyone I know because most people like grew up with Pokemon, at least a lot of people. And it's an app that allows your little avatar to go around and collect Pokemon through an augmented reality interface. So it starts with a map overlay of wherever you are and and this is where we are. Yeah, so we're on campus. And I'm new to this. <laughs> I just downloaded it this morning, so I'm not fully there, although I am level three. Which After I'm this morning? Very proud. Well done. Of <laughs> because I didn't drive to work, somebody else drove for me. So you walk around, and this is exactly where we are. We're inside the building, and they really map the environment around you based on a, what is really out there, which is fantastic because that means that as teachers, we're going to see all of this in the fall because everybody has downloaded this. Uh, not every kid will have a smartphone in school that they're going to use this, but they're all going to be aware. They're all going to be playing with it in one way or another. And so we can think about this as a distraction. It might be a distraction in the classroom, but there's a, there are ways to think about how do we leverage this phenomena to really uh, help in education. So walk us a little bit through because I've, I'm new to all of this. <laughs> so as you're going through, so you found a, a Pokestop mm -hmm. and Pokestops are places that in your community or in where you are have some sort of significance to where you are. Um, and when you go to the Pokestop, you spin the medallion if mm -hmm. you're close enough to it yeah. and it'll give you free things, Pokeballs and potions and other things you need to advance in the app. And the one thing I like about this is if you click on the little arrow, it actually tells you something about the spot you're in. So with encouragement, kids can actually learn to explore their environment in a way that is uh, relevant, that they can find the things that are actually interesting in their environment and not just wander around and say there's nothing here, uh, which uh, I like. And then the larger ones, so we see this yeah. red thing, those are gyms, which you're not high enough yet. You have to yeah, reach level five I gotta practice. before you can go to a gym. Um, but the gyms are where you go to train your Pokemon. That's also at level five where you pick your team. Mm -hmm. There are three teams. There's the red team, there's the yellow team, and there's the blue team. All right. And the online forums will tell you more than what you needed to know. But as you choose your team, um, they kind of give you a little brief bio of what the different teams do. Most people choose their team based on which gym is closest to where they spend most yep. of their time. Um, there's a yellow gym down the street from where mm -hmm. I live, so I joined the yellow team. <laughs> yeah. um, so when you're walking around, mm -hmm. what it'll do is it'll, this circle radius that it's yep. letting out, when you're when a site, so a Pokestop or a gym. So I'm going to walk that. around and see there if I go. can find anything. You can keep when they, talking. When they touch that circle, that's when you have access to whatever that object is. So as you see, the map will live update as he moves around. Um, so if you're on a data plan, be aware that this will use all of your data. This game also drains your battery really quickly. There is a setting where you can go into a power saving mode. Um, but be aware <laughs> that it will drain your battery very quickly. Um, and as you see, so he found another Pokestop. There's another Pokestop. If we were close enough, he would be receiving yeah. items for attending. And you can return to the same Pokestop. Um, and so what he just pulled up now shows Pokemon that are in the area. Mm -hmm. And at, right below the grayed out area shows little feet, and that's how close they are to you. So three means they're still pretty far out. Two, they're closer. One, they're pretty close. Um, if it's grayed out, it means it's one you don't already have in your Pokedex. Oh. If it's colored in, it means you already have one. 
you can collect multiples of the same one. And in mm -hmm. fact, you want to because you also get little, I think they call them food, but you use those candy, to candy. That's candy. what it is. And you use those to make them evolve, to give them more power. So when you go to the gym, mm -hmm. you have a Pokemon that can do something other than get beat very badly. Like I did the first time I went to a gym, didn't know what I was doing and lost a lot. Um, so one of the other things, if you go mm -hmm. into here, and so these are the Pokemon that you have, mm -hmm. and I always recommend that we sort them by combat power, because those, those are the ones that you're going to want to focus your energy on, because mm -hmm. they're going to do the best things for you at the gym. Now, if you slide over, it'll take you to where you have eggs, and eggs go into the incubator, and this is what I call the Fitbit part of Pokemon, because once you have an egg in the incubator, you have to walk. Now, mm -hmm. the app does have to be open to count the steps. Yeah. And every five kilometers, you incubate an egg. So it encourages kids to go out there and... And move. And, and move. also to figure out the metric system. <laughs> because they don't know what five kilometers and is. It, it doesn't work if you're in the car. Like That's if you're driving nice. around, it doesn't, you it can't doesn't cheat. work. You can't cheat. Does it work when you bike? That I don't know. Because I had a friend that tried it out in the car. Like they're like, maybe if I go really slow, like 10 miles an hour through yeah. the neighborhoods. No. You got to walk. You got to walk. Um, and the map will change. So when it's dark outside, the map will look kind of like what Google Maps does. When mm -hmm. it's dark outside, it'll change to that darker interface. Yeah. Um, so that'll work. I'm, I'm trying to start the incubating start. Uh, you don't have any eggs yet. I do have an egg. You do have an egg? Yeah, I think so. See, I have an egg. Okay, start I incubating. Want to start incubating. Come on. Do I need to? Is it grayed out? Looks I like it's grayed out. Oh, okay. Maybe hmm. I can't. Maybe I have only one incubator and I'm already incubating one. And I cannot walk well because I'm recovering from surgery. So, so that would this is not going to work well oh, for so people this, recovering from surgery. This was confusing to me where it says that the incubator, yeah. um, and it gave the infinity sign. That means you can use it. Yeah, as multiple, many times. As many as times, like not that you have infinite numbers of them. <laughs> so I was thinking about the few ways you can, uh, you can use it or you're going to see. As a teacher, I think especially elementary into middle school, where I think you see it first, is when kids can choose what to write about, they're probably going to write <laughs> about, when they don't know what to write about, they're going to write about Pokemon Go and where did they get their Pokemon and all of that. And, and that's fantastic. Um, uh, Jim G used to give an example um, of uh, when you think about kids and their limited capacity to remember things and to process a lot of information and all of that. And he, said, he always said, you know, there are, at those days, there were only 150 Pokemon. There are a lot more. But kids remember all the Pokemon and their evolved forms and what do they eat and who do they combat and what are their attacks. He, said, he used to say, you know, you, you can't say that kids can't learn uh, really sophisticated things if they can do all of that. The trick is to get them interested. So thinking, what got me thinking about Pokemon Go is really not necessarily what can we do with the exact game, although it is interesting, but also thinking about the potential of uh, game mechanics in getting kids engaged and getting them to learn things that are potentially really sophisticated because while it is, you know, pokey science, it's not real science, but if you think about learning about things about uh, different animals, flora, fauna, and all of that, there's, there are very clear similarities. I mean, they didn't bring it from nowhere. So we're going to see it in writing. Definitely reading, especially mm -hmm. if you encourage kids to go online and find out what others are saying, what tricks they have, and all of that. Kids are exploring, they're going. Well, it can be a like, prompt for a web mm -hmm. search or a web quest that you have yeah. them do based on a Pokestop that's near their neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And then they're forced to go out and learn a little bit more about where they live or the environment around the school. Yeah. Um, I've heard some of my friends that teach, they're talking about like doing pokey breaks. Yeah. Where everybody goes for a little walk outside and that's a good way to just get kids outside and even outside of the game, looking, mm -hmm. actually looking at what's around them and having that experience outside integrated with the video game. Yeah, and, and the video game actually does do that with virtual reality. So when you, uh, with augmented reality, really, not virtual reality. So if you do go outside, your camera can be on and then it looks like you're finding Pokemon uh, right out there and you're actually looking at what's around. Now, 
uh, we really don't want kids necessarily to walk outside with their heads buried in the phone <laughs> only. So you've got to find kind of that sweet spot between having, you know, mm -hmm. we're going to the park, we're going to spend 10 minutes catching Pokemon and then everybody's phones are in and we're going to attend to the outside is one way to think about it, but it is a way to, to motivate kids to want to be outside. Uh, I do think that you can think about mapping and geography mm -hmm. really, really well because suddenly they're interested in finding, okay, so where is that spot, you know? I'm trying to find it. How do I get there? What is it? Uh, and so it's a way really to approach the small-scale geography of your immediate neighborhood, your immediate environment, reading directions. And they do give you a little compass mm -hmm. in the map so you can teach students yeah. some easy baseline navigation, talk about true north versus magnetic light, so yeah. you can have some Those. concepts out there that can really encourage them to learn new things. And a lot of it is about figuring out what you can do with it and how you make it go and go to a gym and being trounced because you <laughs> really don't know what you're doing. Not a clue. <laughs> it's an important piece of this and it's also an important way to, to remind kids that learning is related to effort, it's related to trial and error, it's related to having good experiences and not so good experiences. You remember being trounced and you've learned something from it, I hope. <laughs> I did, I did. That's how I learned about leveling them up and yes. evolving the ones you already and have. So, and, and thinking out loud with kids about these, I think has clear parallels to also thinking about uh, what now everybody's calling grit, and I like talking about stamina, uh, when you're learning. it's. If it doesn't work the first time, you do it again and you do it again and eventually it, it comes out. And so you gain expertise over time and that idea of expertise can come out through games because that's exactly what games do. They reward you for small steps, but they also punish you mightily if you enter the gym completely unprepared. Exactly, you get trounced. <laughs> and, <Painfully>. so, <laughs> and so these are just initial thoughts that I, at least I have about Pokemon Go. Do you have any other ideas? I, cause I have friends that work mm -hmm. in GIS and when, it, when I first started realizing what it was, I thought that was a really great way to even get kids talking about GIS and what it does, why mapping is such a big deal because mm -hmm. they can draw parallels to things like the GPS that their mom uses to mm -hmm. figure out where they're going or when the GPS in the car doesn't work or how quickly the maps need to be updated based on changes that are happening in the mm -hmm. city because I know Lincoln has construction going on everywhere so yeah. how do how do you reroute um, and just I think it opens avenues for different and more in-depth discussions because they can relate it to something simple and something mm -hmm. like a game and then make those parallels to larger things in their world. Yeah, and I, I do want to say that simple is a little bit, uh, it's not a simple game because it is everywhere. And that is because true. it works everywhere and it actually encourages you to be moving around. So that idea that a game, a video game has to be the kind of thing that you play in front of a screen in your, in your living room or in your bedroom or in front of a tablet when you're sitting down is really kind of broken. And I can see, you know, I, I can easily imagine, for example, a zoo and not using Pokemon Go, but creating something that basically takes you through the zoo and you can collect things and you get information and it sends you to different places and that kids can start being the ones navigating. Where do I want to go? How do I get there? Which is really hard because you can look at the map and you, you have these foldy maps and all of that, but it's hard to do on the go and it's hard to kind of do that self-correction thing. And here, with a device, they suddenly can navigate. The same thing can be done in a museum or really in any outdoor or indoor uh, area. So it's really, really exciting about what that might mean to other uh, applications that can be developed. So today on Mobile Learning in the Classroom, we talked about Pokemon Go, and I hope you at least try it, learn about it from your students and from everybody around you, because <laughs> if you're not doing it, almost everybody else you know is doing it. <laughs> And we'll see you next time on Mobile Learning in the Classroom.